So it is by no means perfect. But I think what I should do now is block in the hands a little bit, get some of the colour on the hands and then that will help me hopefully to see what more needs done to the guitar. So I think it's time to get the hand blocked in. The lighter colours on this are really going to contrast with the darkness of both the background and the guitar. And I'm still not really sure if that plan was the right way to go, making the background dark. Right now it doesn't seem like it was the right plan because the background doesn't look so great. But let's see what happens then if I put the the hand in at this stage. And I'm just quickly sketching back in some lines again. I've just lost most of my line sketch. So let's get some colours blocked in on the on the skin tones. Perhaps I'll start with the thumb up here because it's sitting over there by itself. Looks like I could probably get this blocked in quite quickly. So just a little bit of dark shadow around the base of the thumb where it's touching the guitar.
So using the darkness of the background to shape the thumb. Laying in my lighter colours over towards the right side of the thumb, you can see the direction of light in the reference. some stronger reds within the skin tones.
So I'm looking for the darkest creases, the darkest shadows, just like before. Darks in first, build everything around them. So I love to use a bit of vibrance in skin tones and especially hands. I'm just looking at some of those glowing edges. You can see in the photo reference you literally do get some edges which are almost glowing. And I really like that effect in sunlight. I like to paint that effect where you add some little glowing edges around things. Now I'm just looking for shadows, looking for the big blocks of shadow that I can get in. The shadow coming down the little finger. So just mapping out the shadow, the light and shade areas. So what I'm really hoping is that once the nice colours of the hand come in on top of the guitar here, well partly that it might distract you from the guitar itself, but it might make the detail on the guitar a little less important.
So this hand is just packed full of light and shade. We've got the light falling really interestingly across the hand. So I'm just trying to find the outer edge of this finger, get a little bit of light colour in somewhere, start to pick the lights out from the darkness, it's going to help me see what needs to happen. because at the moment I'm really not enjoying the darkness of the background but I'm thinking that when the lighter colours come in on the hand it may just it may just tie it all together I'm really not sure it's a strange one this but I'm I'm gonna keep working this is what I would do this could still end up a painting that gets scrapped at the end I have no idea <laughs> but I'm gonna keep working and see what happens um, I would often recommend persevering with a painting, even if it's not going to plan. Because sometimes you just get a little bit stuck in the ugly stages. So I'm going to see the plan through till the end. Get all the tonal values in on the hand and, and see what effect that has. If some, if the painting maybe is just waiting for some lighter colours to come in.
also it would be nice to get this finger that protrudes out over the top of the guitar here. We've got a nice crisp edge of a fingernail to create here. And I'm coming in with a slightly yellow toned brown earth. And again, I'm just trying to blob the colour in roughly in the right place. And then, of course, I'll come back in and shape this with some pastel pencil. I'm just looking for the colour as it, as the light falls across the fingernail. We've got more shadow on this side. And that warmth really continues right down this finger. So perhaps I'll just use a bit of pastel pencil here actually to find the outer edge of this nail. So I'm using the black pencil here to crisp up the edge of the fingernail. I don't want to leave it like a hard black outline though, so then I feather that back up into the colour of the sleeve a little bit. Just makes it less like a hard edge around the nail. I'm just continuing a bit of highlight on down this finger. So sometimes it really helps to start and get some of the lighter colours in. And you can go for the lighter colours early on in the in the spaces that are going to end up pretty brightly lit. Everywhere else I'm trying to come in pretty dark, but it certainly helps to get a few of my lighter values starting to come in. Give me a sense of the 
the form of the fingers, how the light is hitting them. And I'm just trying to figure out what colour to use to block in the fingernail. And the more I look at it, the more I'm getting a slight lilac-y purple tone. So let's try a little bit of additional 31. And again, just starting to find the outer shape of the tip of the finger and the nail using my background colours as well. Just pushing and pulling the outer edge of this little tip of the finger. It's quite a prominent little part of the finger sitting so nicely just peeping up over the top edge of the guitar and it should stand out nicely against the darkness here. So at this moment of filming disaster struck and my camera did something really weird resulting in me not being able to use the next few moments of footage but in the next few moments I'm doing some of the more important base layer work on the hand and I really didn't want you to miss out on this part of the process so I transferred my drawing again onto a fresh piece of paper and I've painted myself back to this stage. Obviously I did not do the fretboard again but I just wanted to demo this part of the hand and to not lose any of the footage from this tutorial. So apologies that you can't see this part of the hand develop with the fretboard behind, but it does come back into my original footage very soon again. So I was just about to pick up this uh, Caran d'Ache pencil. It's a light lilac color, light ultramarine violet it's called. And I'm going to use this quite a lot in the finishing touches on the fingers. It's a nice highlight option, but it also brings in a little touch of cool highlight. So it's not as warm in colour, for example, as my other Caran d'Ache, the rose pink. So this gives me a nice cool option, which I will need. So I'm just going to work a little bit on the two fingernails that we can really see. And I'm just using this light lilac colour to shape and lighten the right side of the fingernail. So a bit of a disaster to get to some part of your filming process and realise that the camera has not been ticking along as you thought it was. It's only ever happened to me a couple of times before and in all of those cases rather than let my tutorial go out with a part missing like that or to waste all of the footage 
I've usually opted to patch in, make a little bridge in the demo and it usually works fine. So you will get to see every step of my process here. Nothing like giving yourself an extra couple of hours work though. Um, not impressed when I discovered it. So just a little bit of pastel pencil coming in now to help me shape the fingernail. I'm using the darker brown pencil just on this side of the nail where we're in the shadows. So that's the shadow side of the nail. You don't want to bring that dark brown right across into the light. Instead I'll perhaps use my light uh, sort of peachy coloured, fleshy coloured sort of pencil this uh, just to shape the bottom section and the far side. And even already that, that starts to take shape just with getting that light and shade on each side. So I can do exactly the same now with this fingernail. I'm using my brown earth colour, just a kind of slightly yellow tone on the tip of the fingernail. Bringing in a little bit of shadow colour on one side and then I can help all of that with a little bit of pastel pencil as well. And of course around the outer edge can also be helped with pastel pencil. Both on the finger and on the fretboard as well. And of course I don't have the, the light and shade so much to worry about here on the fretboard. Um, I was just careful to work around the strings that I'd already created. But it's pretty much what I'm doing here, so the same idea, just neatening up using the darker colours in the background. And this light rose pink colour is going to be really useful for some of my top layers just to bring in 
a little bit of texture on the fingers. I don't want to get too much into that until I get more of an overall layer of colour on the fingers. So what I'm going to do now is leave the fingertips as they are um, and come back to minor details. I've kind of got them blocked in at least. And just continue adding some vibrant touches of colour into my lower layers. I really want these vibrant splashes of red to shine through at the end. And these will appear mostly around the edges of the shadows, mostly in the, the divisions between light and shade. That's where you often find these real glowing um, bits of colour. So I can just quickly get whole areas blocked in now. And I even want to bring some of this RE colour in. It's a little bit more orange in tone than what I've been using. I've been going peachy colours, the really vibrant red. I'm just mixing in a bit of this colour to shine through these lower layers. scumbling that pigment on. I'm not bothering to blend absolutely every layer but when it does get to a certain point I will sort of lightly sm start to move and smudge things together a little bit. So this is A27 and this is a, a very subtle colour that will feature a lot within the shadows. I'm just picking out the outer edge of the little finger and I can afford to block in a little bit more. It creates kind of a lighter mid-tone colour for the areas of the fingers where they're in the shadow. So it's just a little bit cooler, a little bit more neutral than some of the colours I'll use within the sunlit parts. So my colour choices are really the key to describing the light and shade. And now my lighter red earth filling in the shape that makes the main section of highlight here. Same on the next finger. So I'm literally looking for the shapes, the overall shapes. What shape does that highlighted area make? What's it doing? How does that describe the general form of the finger, the anatomy? So just going for the, some of the highlights really at the minute because that's going to help me visualise then how I start to refine this. 
always helpful at a certain point to get a few highlights in and to start to see the lighting. So let's just pick up something a little bit more muted coming down here. A little bit of BE21. of this bit of shadow so I'm really just filling in the gaps at the minute and I'm doing that by looking at the light and shade so the light and shade really helps to split the hand up a little bit I always find painting things that are in strong sunlight they have a very I have a very strong sense of their structure because of the way the light is falling on them so I always find that easier Whereas something that's been photographed in very flat lighting it might be harder to make the structure of it interesting or obvious in the painting. That can sometimes actually be trickier, I find, anyway. So I'm just giving it a little bit of a blend together now with my fingertip. Start to mix some of those colours just a little bit. You don't want to go crazy with the blending. Depends a little bit on the paper that you're using. On pastel matte, once you get a few layers of colour on the paper, things do start to move. You've got to get a few layers on the paper first, but once you do, it does want to move and slide around a little bit. So you want to still have control over it. You don't want it to get out of control and, and become a bit of a muddied mess. So I'm just giving these base layers a bit of a blend here. And then I can start to come back in and shape things and refine a little bit more. So let's take the black pencil now and just strengthen some of these spaces between the fingers, the darkest shadow in there. Seem right across these because of course you lose some of the punch of your darkest shadows as you work the lighter colours in and around. And of course on the outer edge here as well, I can clean that up a little. Let's get the other couple of fingernails blocked in as well. I'm using my dark purple colour here. 
because these ones are in a lot of shadow tucked in here especially the little fingernail And again, I'll use some pastel pencil just to refine because around the nail is quite tricky and it's definitely helpful to have a bit of, well, both brown and black here. Just to refine the outer shape. Again, earlier in my earlier version I've had to work around the fretboard a little bit, just be careful with my the strings that I'd created. And we will join back in with that original footage very soon. I've almost almost got to the stage where we're back to the original footage. Just trying to shape that little fingernail in there. And just a little bit more light reaching this fingernail. So I'm using the light lilac pencil very lightly. So let's pick out a little bit more light and definition within the shadows. It's mostly coming down the edges of the fingers. And I'm using the A27 for that. A little bit of definition coming around the back of the knuckle here and coming down this part of the dark shadow on the middle finger. But I'm very much trying to leave some of the red marks showing through right to the end and they're really around the edges of these shadows a lot. So working my way across the shadow on each finger. And forgetting that I've got some dark pigment on my little finger before rubbing it into a lighter area. So let's take my light RE and clean this up. I was coming over here to add some highlight anyway. So I removed the excess pigment that I didn't want there with my well with my cleaned fingertip and now I'm just going over the top of it so it's not a big a big deal to get some dark pigment in the wrong place but it's certainly not helpful. So making all of these little marks now 
in the shape of the finger so I'm really thinking about the cylindrical shape of the finger and I'm thinking about the structure of the knuckles how they're catching the light letting a little bit of light come down this part of the finger I can afford to strengthen this bit of highlight here and on the middle finger just cutting across the middle finger, this darker shadow. Start to soften all of that together now. So that's pretty much everything blocked in at least. Ready then to start unrefining each area. But even at just the block in stage, which is still quite rough looking, you start to get a sense of it. So let's take a little bit more of my lilac colored pencil. I really liked how this finger looks a bit squished against the other finger in this pose. And you can really start to hint at that. by using these bits of highlight now. But again, always thinking about the finger in terms of being cylindrical or almost cylindrical.
So again, little touches of pastel pencil, especially to help with the detail around the nails. Trying to soften that dark line there because you can see how harsh that dark line looked when I put it on. It just really stands out. So I'm trying not to make the fingers look like they're outlined, but there are some areas where I can use a dark line to define something. So then I can start to get progressively lighter with my highlights or with some of the highlights, just bringing some of them up even lighter and start to filter in some smaller details. So this is pretty much back now to where I have picked up my original footage. Um, so you should see the guitar fretboard pop up magically on screen now. So with everything blocked in, now it's a matter of pushing and pulling at my shadows, making those darker where they need to be. Perhaps just bring in a little bit of dark brown in this very dark shadow on the middle finger here, below the knuckle. And then as before, also using some A27 within the shadows. So bit by bit making the difference, the contrast between light and shade more apparent. And at some point then I can start to bring in some pastel pencil. And with the pastel pencils I can really use those to try and hint at some of the textures on the fingers. Just making sure that I've got a clean fingertip to blend my lighter areas. And 
and this lovely lilac coloured Caran d'Ache. Definitely a very useful colour for skin tones in general. And as I can progress, I can add the, the smaller little creases and lines that we're seeing. I'm still going back into my shadows though and making those more colourful, adding colour into the shadows. So this is a bit of pure white. Let's see if we can add a bit of the brightest highlight coming down this finger. I'm really saving up my pure white for where I need it the most. And as we come across the finger towards the shadow again, bringing in the lilac coloured pencil. Uh, just having a look at this little section here where the finger is really squished up against the other finger. I'm bringing in a little bit of highlight using A31. And I can even darken this little bit of shadow here. So when I do choose to bring in some bright white highlights, it's got to be somewhere where it's really necessary. I'm seeing some 
really bright little glints of light catching the skin here and even in around the nail perhaps And that's really how I start to bring in some detail using the lighter colours. So being very sparing with the pure white, where I want it to be quite light but not as stark and bright as white then I'm bringing in this lovely rose pink colour. And it makes such a big difference to remember that cylindrical shape to the finger. So try to keep that in mind when you're adding texture. And then highlights over on the other side of each finger where we're just about to slip into the shadows. A little bit more muted using my light lilac colour. So I can really start to pick out the form of each finger using these smaller details and then just giving them a little tap to soften the marks. Just bring a bit more warmth into this part of the finger. So I'm really looking at the reflected colours, the temperature of each area. So this is where the fine tuning really starts. And looking at those important spots to add the main bits of highlight. highlight there on this knuckle.
So slightly more muted color as we come down this part of the finger. Not quite as brightly lit as up here that's really facing the sunshine. So again they're searching out a little shape within the shadows. We've got our shadow line coming across here. I can strengthen the edge of that shadow. So again, now I start to look for the highlight on this finger. And just like before, I'm looking for any places that I can bring in a little bit of this cooler highlight color. Just as it comes across into the shadow area, our highlight just becomes a little bit more muted. So I'm just shaping this bit of shadow as it comes down the side of the knuckle.
And so a little bit of soft pastel white because there's quite a big bit of highlight to go down this. I'll be here all day with the pencil. Again, I'm just making these little marks, kind of curving up and around the shape of the finger, trying to describe the form of the finger here. I'm doing my lightest possible blending. I don't want to lose my marks. I just want to soften that all together slightly. And then maybe just a little bit of glinting highlight on this little bit of nail. So yeah, try not to overdo it with my highlights. They're important um, in that they must show the form of the finger. And if I just come in really heavy handed with the highlights, then I run the risk of covering all, all of my lovely dark contrasted colors that I need there to make my highlights effective. Perhaps we'll come in with the soft pastel again, as that worked nicely on the middle finger, so... So, just aiming those white marks down the side of the finger where we're getting the strongest bit of highlight. And it should show up if you've used slightly darker red earth tones for the skin. So let's bring in the pastel pencil now, just around the, the knuckle here. I'm really noticing the change of light as we come down this part of the finger behind the knuckle here.
So as soon as I come back in and darken some of my darkest shadows, again, that's pushing the tonal values further apart, making the lighting each time that bit more convincing. So we're getting there now. I'm just going right across the fingers, adding some little bits of detail. Not going to go into every single little bit of texture on the hand. But trying to hint at some of the little details some of the wrinkles, especially around the knuckles, as that also helps to describe the bend that we're seeing in the fingers and the foreshortening that we're seeing. I don't have to do too much to the fingernails in there because we can see so little of them. very strong bit of highlight just coming right down the edge of this bit of shadow. So because I've got all these darker colours down at the beginning, now when I come through to create these little bits of texture, my lighter colours all show up really nicely on top of those darker colours and that's the key really. I don't have to use white when I want to make a, a light coloured highlight because I can use lots of other colours as highlights and they will show up, they will register as something pretty light because of all of the other colours that I've got surrounding.
just slightly lightening the purple pencil by adding just a little bit of white over the top. So I don't want this nail to look white, but And I've just given Andrew, who, who owns this hand, a little preview of my progress. And he mentioned, oh, you, I see you've painted the dirt under my fingernails. That's nice. <laughs> so maybe I'm just going to clean that nail up a little bit. But hey, my fingernails are always dirty. You can't be an artist with um, really clean fingernails, as often represented by my own. <laughs> So the dirt under the fingernails is optional. So at this stage, it's really just a sit back and have a look time. Um, see, is there something more I can neaten up some more detail that I can add? Just cleaning up some of the dark areas. I can do the same around the the outskirts of the hand. So I like the fact that I went for the dark background actually. I think that has worked quite well. Um, it's just a strange little piece with this hand looming out of the dark, but I hope that at least you find this interesting and helpful if you're including hands in something larger. It is always useful to try something in a detailed style, but always remember that there are ways to find like the shorthand version of it and paint something with less detail in a larger painting. So I certainly wouldn't spend this long painting one hand if it was part of a larger portrait with um, a person's face, both hands, perhaps full body. And it's just a matter of painting it in a slightly different style. I really paint in a different style when I'm zoomed in on something and I'm really going for the detail on it. So just a bit of neatening at the edges of the shadows using my blending tool. And even with my shadows I'm making little lines that wrap around that part of the finger rather than making up and down lines like this, coming in like this as if you're going around the shape of the, the finger itself. It's really helpful to create the 3D 
effect. So yeah, I think I'll call this done pretty soon. It's the sort of thing that I could come back to again and again. I know that if I stop now and have a look at the guitar strings, I could spend another hour just neatening and making those a little bit more precise because they are a little bit wonky. I don't mind a little bit of that though. I've certainly done my best. The steadiest hand I could I could employ to try and add those strings and it's certainly not easy. Although it's a pretty tough challenge, I've got to say I really enjoy painting hands. I can't really say that I enjoy painting guitar necks or fretboards, but maybe someday I'll attempt that again with a bit less detail in mind next time. But I hope that you enjoyed this real-time demo here on YouTube. If you like the style of this, then do remember to check me out over on Patreon where I've got a huge library filled with all of these real-time tutorials, including this little hand here on the right, if you fancy having a go at this. But I hope that many of you have tried this one and that you'll work along with me and pick up your pastels to have a go at painting hands. So please do remember to subscribe here on YouTube. Thanks very much for watching this here and until next time, happy pastling.